Last night, Sheffield Wednesday made history. After being four goals down going into the second leg, they fought back and provided a football miracle. In today's episode, I'm going to reflect, look back and tactically break down exactly how Sheffield Wednesday made history at Hillsborough. <laughs> So first and foremost, when reflecting and describing that Wednesday performance last night, the two words that come to mind are belief and character. The mental strength to approach a game that you're 4-0 down in and perform to that level is simply incredible. The narrative of not having the bottle, being mentally weak when the pressure is on was utterly destroyed last night from those players and that coaching staff. To overcome a four goal deficit, trail again in extra time and then take the game to penalties probably the most intense and pressurising situation. To overcome all of those obstacles was simply mind-blowing. Whether you believe in Darren Moore or not, the bottom line is he provided those players with the ingredients and the mentality to go on and achieve greatness. So we're looking at the game plan and the tactical elements of that match yesterday. The game plan by Darren Moore was clear, intelligent, but also undefendable. They played extremely direct and got the ball into the penalty area at every opportunity. They ended the game with a total XG of 4.43. The team selection and physical attributes of Smith, Gregory and Patterson worked wonders with the intention to overhaul, dominate and take control of the Peterborough penalty box. Michael Smith won the third most aerial duels and the most ground duels out of any other player on the pitch. He used his bullish presence to create opportunity and cause problems for the Peterborough defence throughout the entire game. Wednesday finished the game with 28 total shots, 23 of those coming from inside the box. You can see the shot map on the screen right now. Talk about winning over your opposition's penalty area. That shot map paints a very clear picture. In fact, it wasn't just the penalty area in which Wednesday looked to dominate, but actually both the middle and the Peterborough third throughout the entire game. You can see once again on the screen the action zones in which the game was played. The tactical intention from Darren Moore was to squash and squeeze the life out of Peterborough and not allow them to get any foothold in the game. And considering only 17% of the game was played in an area in which Posh could be threatening, you could probably say that game plan did work. If there was any more evidence of football suffocation, that can be shown with the average positions on the screen now. There was absolutely no attacking outlet for Peterborough across the game other than a couple of opportunities for Mason Clark in that first half. They offered nothing. Whether they wanted to do that or not, inviting pressure was a complete recipe for disaster. The relentless nature and intensity was just way too much and to that extent was something I'd never seen before. Wednesday got that element completely spot on. You can also see by looking at the graph here by sofa score, the game was just simply in just one direction, especially in that second half. Wednesday could not be stopped. They were unstoppable and Posh couldn't get near them. And speaking of unstoppable, Callum Patterson was immense and played a crucial role last night. His heat map shows the amount of distance that he covered and the area that he took over throughout the entire game. He played the full 120 minutes, never stopped running. He scored, assisted, played long balls, crossed and won the most tackles out of any other player on the pitch. Naturally, a striker playing as a right wing back or right midfielder, he was just brilliant. And like I said, he scored, assisted, contributed going forward, but also won the most tackles. A workaholic, a machine and I think set the bar to all other Wednesday individual performances and in the end a fantastic team performance as well. It's also important to mention that Wednesday's defence was faultless throughout the entire game. Of course, one goal in normal time would have probably killed off the tie and allowed a real shift in the flow of the game. I thought Michael Ahikwe in particular really stood out in the centre of that back three for Wednesday. He won the most total duels out of any other player and quickly played the ball into midfield to allow that transition into attack. He was perfection. He came in for Aidan Flint and I think it really gave them something a little bit different and quite progressive with that back three, with James on one side as well, who also came into that starting lineup. His overlapping runs were fantastic, and we saw that with the goal that he scored, of course, in the second half. 
Another player that must be mentioned after last night is Liam Palmer. He played in midfield, providing mobility, goal contribution, work rate and almost a man mark on Peterborough's star man, Jack Taylor. We know how good Jack Taylor was in that first leg. Stopping him was going to be really important as well. And that was Liam Palmer's role. For a homegrown lad to score that goal at that moment was football romance and topped off what was an outstanding individual performance. I dare that we can reflect on last night's game without giving the credit to Liam Palmer of Sheffield Wednesday as well. And when we speak about Sheffield Wednesday stopping the key players that Peterborough do have in abundance, Johnson Clark Harris has got 22 goals this season. He touched the ball only 31 times last night. Five accurate passes, 10 inaccurate passes, eight clearances, eight headers and zero shots. <laughs> And finally, the 12th man. It's a cliche in football, but last night that Hillsborough atmosphere was simply sensational and got those players very literally over the line. After that perfect early goal through Michael Smith, it was one-way traffic and those supporters should and will earn great credit for driving their team to ultimate success. Of course, it was seen to be almost impossible, but they united and believed in one footballing dream. And last night, that footballing dream became a reality. For Wednesday, next stop will be Wembley Stadium in 10 days' time. They can sit back and enjoy the second leg of the second playoff final between Bolton and Barnsley tonight, where, of course, everything is still to play for. It's going to be a fascinating game, that one. And like I said on my match reaction after the game that you can watch on the channel right now, that was probably one of my favourite and the best games of football I have ever watched. It was that good. Just being a part of it, not being directly linked with either Sheffield Wednesday or Peterborough, I still felt so invested and the twists and turns were simply incredible. Hopefully you did enjoy it. I wanted to wake up this morning, delve into this game even deeper because it does deserve another video. It does deserve a tactical breakdown. Congratulations to Wednesday once again. Commiserations to Peterborough United. A fantastic first leg, but of course a collapse in the second leg and a penalty disaster in the end was the reason why you won't be competing in the final and will be once again in League One next season. Commiserations, like I said, to Peterborough and Darren Ferguson. But until next time, please do leave a like and subscribe. If you did enjoy this video, preview for the Wednesday and the whoever their opposition is that we'll find out tomorrow will be on the channel very, very soon. Until next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Jack Wood Football Podcast and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care.